In what may be her first notable action in Washington, D.C., Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez led a protest against Nancy Pelosi over climate change, which confused a lot of people because Nancy Pelosi is a Democrat who supports climate change legislation. They're wondering why the Democrats are protesting each other. Well, as it turns out, many Democrats actually oppose Nancy Pelosi as Speaker of the House. I think we can see that there is a transformation happening within the Democratic Party. Now, people have warned in the past the Democrats are pushing too far to the left. And I think that's fair to say. When you look at Kirsten Sinema winning in Arizona, and she ran as a centrist, I mean, at least that's how they're reporting it. So it seems to me that this, this far left contingent that is now within the Democratic Party will only cause inner turmoil and may actually benefit the Republicans. So today, let's take a look at the news about what Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez actually did and how the far left is actually responding to the protest. But before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Virtual Shield. Virtual Shield is a virtual private network service. This means they keep your data safe from snoopers, from hackers, big business, while you're browsing the web. Right now, they're having a Black Friday sale. You'll get 40% off. That means you can have this service for just $2.99 per month. Just go to hidewithtim.com and click get this exclusive deal and you can get started on your free 30 day trial. So if you're someone who is interested in a simple layer of protection for your internet browsing, the link will be in the description below. From ABC News, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez opens freshman orientation by leading protest at Nancy Pelosi's office. Before she's even taken an oath of office, Representative-elect Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez joined protesters at Nancy Pelosi's office and led a sit-in to protest climate change. Activists stormed the lobby of Pelosi's congressional office in the Cannon House office building Tuesday, with hundreds more protesters lining the hallway. Protesters inside the lobby of Pelosi's office voluntarily left and moved a short distance into the hallway after about 45 minutes. They sat on the hallway floor and sang in unison. It then took another 45 minutes for police officers to close the hallways leading to Pelosi's office and push the crowd back away from the California Democrats' office. 51 people were arrested and charged with unlawfully demonstrating in the House office building, according to U.S. Capitol Police. And that news came yesterday, but today we're hearing from ABC News, never Nancy. Democrats ramp up efforts to sideline Pelosi without offering an alternative. A band of House Democrats determined to oppose House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi's speaker bid are planning to release a signed letter as soon as this week indicating that they have gathered enough support to deny her the 218 votes needed to win the gavel on the House floor in January. A move they say would complicate her path to a second term as speaker and force renewed discussion about her stepping aside. This is a simple letter saying we want new leadership, which is what a vast majority of Democrats and the American people want. Rep. Seth Moulton of Massachusetts, a member of the group, told reporters Tuesday. ABC News has identified at least 14 sitting Democrats and incoming members who have vowed to oppose Pelosi on the House floor. Sources involved in the effort say that the number has grown to at least 20 members, with many more incoming Democrats undecided. Pelosi can only afford to lose six votes a number that could grow to 14 if Democrats win the eight House races yet to be called. Pelosi's allies have been quick to criticize the group vowing to block her as working to derail the will of the majority of House Democrats and have ridiculed the group for not being able to find a candidate to challenge her for speaker head on. While those speaking in opposition to Nancy Pelosi may not be the new progressive wave of far left activists, many far left activists are actually in agreement with those who oppose her saying she doesn't represent the will of the Democratic Party. For one thing, we saw this story in the New Republic about a year ago. Nancy Pelosi is totally out of touch with the Democratic base. And this morning, we saw a tweet from left-wing comedian and activist Lee Camp saying, Nancy Pelosi has already announced she wants to find common ground with fascists, racists, and xenophobes. This is because the two main parties agree on 90% of the structural aspects of this country. The common ground is defending the class structure and further enriching the rich. Now, I don't know if Nancy Pelosi is the right choice, but I do think it's interesting that she supports climate change legislation and the left-wing activists would protest her. Why wouldn't they go and protest the Republicans who oppose climate change legislation? Why would you, pro why would you pro protest the person who actually agrees with you? I have no idea. But what's interesting, though, is that many people who support Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez don't seem to understand how this political system works. In fact, it looks like the centrists won, the centrist Democrats are making history. Well, you could argue the progressives are as well. It seems like we're still kind of split as to whether or not the far left Democrats will actually take more power as the year, years goes on, or if centrism is the right way to go. But I can say 
There's a lot of rhetoric being pushed around about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez that is straight up incorrect and seems to be propaganda to make people believe that the far left is stronger than they really are. This low quality image was being shared on Facebook, which I found really interesting. They say the pro-socialist candidate, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, won with over 78% of the vote. They say 78% voted to support radical policies of free college, universal job guarantee, Medicare for all. They say young Americans have been indoctrinated by the left in schools, universities, and in the media. This is what the future of America will look like if we don't do anything about it. What's interesting is that this meme is meant to make it seem like young people are going crazy for supporting socialism. But this is actually being shared by both sides because both sides agree with its message and both sides are 100% wrong. While you can say that, yes, 78% of the vote did go to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, you have to consider that her opponents weren't really campaigning in the first place. Yes, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez did in fact win her district with 78% of the vote. But this is more likely due to the fact that Anthony Pappas, Joseph Crowley, and Elizabeth Perry weren't really competition in the first place. Anthony Pappas wasn't really campaigning all that much. And this is a massive Democratic district in New York City. Most people just vote Democrat no matter what their choice is. And I'm sure there are many people who don't like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez because she's made numerous gaffes, but felt they'd rather vote for the Democrat than anyone else. So sure, she did win with 70% of the vote, but this is like a D plus 30 district, so it's not surprising in the least bit. When you want to get into the nuance, you can see that it was the Democratic primary that got Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez elected, but she only had about 16,000 votes in a district of 740,000 or so. 15,000 votes, 16,000, it's all she needed to win the primary. And then because the district is heavily Democratic, they voted for her over anybody else. There has been this internal struggle since Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez won. In fact, actually, I'd say it goes back to the rise of Bernie Sanders. When Bernie Sanders first announced he was running, he was in like some basketball gymnasium with a really poorly made banner that said Bernie for president. But his campaign it caught fire and people rushed to his support. I think the reason for it is the people of this country are tired of the elitism. So you really had a lot of people rushing to support Donald Trump, who's a populist, and Bernie Sanders, who's a populist. And as we know, the Democrats stole the primary from Bernie to support Hillary and Hillary couldn't win. Between 12 and 18% of Bernie Sanders supporters went to Donald Trump. I really do believe Bernie Sanders would have beat Donald Trump, but Hillary Clinton wanted to run and thus she lost. She was a bad candidate. Following this, many people said that the Democrats need to move further left. Many progressives started saying, look at what you're doing, Democrats. You've got to support the far left. But according to The Economist, out of 78 primaries, the far left candidates, the progressives, only won about seven of 78. They were trounced across the board. And we can look right now to what just happened in Arizona with Kirsten Cinema. She is the first Democrat to be elected to the Senate in Arizona in nearly a quarter century. And according to the Associated Press, Democrat Cinema wins Arizona Senate seat running as a centrist. They said that Cinema targeted moderate Republican and independent women by painting herself as a nonpartisan problem solver who voted to support Trump's agenda 60% of the time. Her nearly single issue campaign talked about the importance of health care and protections for people with pre-existing conditions. Think about that. The Democrat who said that more often than not, she supports Donald Trump won in Arizona. So how many times does it need to be said that the Democrats need to be moderate, that the far left is a fluke, that they overwhelmingly lost? In fact, Cynthia Nixon, who was running against Cuomo in New York for governor, lost Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's district by 30 points. The far left is causing nothing but problems for the Democrats. And I'm sure the Republicans and the right are happy about it. How many gaffes does Cortez have to have? She goes and protests Nancy Pelosi. And look, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of left-wing activists who say, good, she should. But there's also many more people on the Democratic side saying, don't protest the person who agrees with you. Go and protest the Republicans. It seems like the far left is only serving to poison the Democratic Party by creating infighting. And it seems like they only won by small margins. They lost most of their primaries. And those who actually got in, got in simply because they won a few thousand votes. Seriously, only about three or 4,000 more votes in the primary in a district of 740,000. That's what got Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez elected. Not that she had some radical policy that was going to be better for everybody, but just the idea that most people didn't participate in the primary to begin with because it is a heavily Democratic district. Now, look, that's Joseph Crowley's fault. He should have taken this, this seriously. 
Because when you have a candidate who says they're going to guarantee you a job, they're going to give you free health care and free college tuition, well, of course people are going to support that. That means you need to campaign on honesty and say sometimes life is hard. Sometimes you have to work hard and sometimes life is not fair. That doesn't mean the government can actually support these expensive programs, but that's what Cortez ran on. And now Cortez is protesting the Democrats. This is bad for Democrats. Look, the Republicans control most of the government still. They have the Senate, they have the Supreme Court, they have the executive branch. The Democrats only have the House. Now is not the time for the Democrats to be fighting each other. And that's why it looks to to me like the far left from the activists to candidates like Cortez are only going to be a problem for Democrats moving forward. Now, look, I'm not saying I'm a fan of Nancy Pelosi. I'm not saying what Cortez did is right or wrong. I'm just saying what I can see when I'm looking at this is infighting within the Democratic Party between the far left activists on the outside, candidates on the inside, those trying to oppose Nancy Pelosi may actually be benefiting the Republicans. So we'll see what happens, right? There are still many races that are yet to be called. Things have just started to settle down with the midterms. We still have accusations of voter fraud in Florida, which is absolutely ridiculous, but we'll see how this ends up playing out. In my opinion, I think the far left is at odds with the Democrats as much as the Democrats are at odds with Republicans, and this is only going to be bad for Democrats. But let me know what you think in the comments below. We'll keep the conversation going. How do you feel about Cortez protesting Pelosi? How do you feel about people opposing Pelosi? Do you think this is just going to be bad for Democrats? Or ultimately, do you think this will be a positive change within the Democratic Party as they seek to oppose Republicans? Comment below. We'll keep the conversation going. You can follow me on Twitter at TimCast. Stay tuned. New videos every day at 4 p.m. And I've got more videos coming up on my second channel, youtube.com slash TimCastNews at 6 p.m. Again, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all next time.